Good evening, everybody. I wanted to do this sermon titled Jeroboam, a Godless King, and the Idols He Promoted in Israel. And we're going to be reading from 1 Kings 12, 30 through 33. And it says, And this thing became a sin, and the people came and came to worship the one at Bethel, and went as far as Dan and worshipped the other. Jeroboam built shrines on high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people, even though they were not Levites. He instituted a festival on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the festival held in Judah. He offered sacrifices on the altar. This he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves he had made. And at Bethel, he also installed priests at the high places he had made. On the fifteenth day of the eighth month of the month of his own choosing, he offered sacrifices on the offer, altar he had built at Bethel. So he instituted a festival for the Israelites and went up to the altar to make offerings. There is so much we can learn from this small text. We see... Later, God was angry at Jeroboam and his wickedness, so angry that he reserved one of the most cruelest, harshest fates that he only allotted to the most wicked of kings and the most vile of people in the Old Testament times. God was going to wipe out Jeroboam and his descendants from the earth, and Jeroboam's dead body would be eaten by street dogs. Uh, now, if you ever seen street dogs... They are not exactly a clean and friendly, uh, lovable type of animal. They have become, they've, they're known to carry diseases, and they're sometimes aggressive. And they were not pets in these times. So, uh, to be treat, they were be, to be treated with disgust. And so when God chose this special type of judgment on someone, it showed that he really despised who he was dealing with. Uh, to call someone a dog in the Old Testament times was one of the worst comparisons you could make uh, about another person. Yet this evil king Jeroboam lived up to such an unclean title. That was for sure. In verse 31, we see Jeroboam created a nas national pagan festival worship uh, for worshiping these false gods. In this time, golden calves were the thing to be devoted to and were and led the people into sinful pagan worship. He did choose he did not choose real priests at all for serving the true Lord, but he appointed priests from all sorts of people. That was a big no-no in the Old Testament. If you were going to institute a priest, it had to be a Levite and they had to serve the Lord. But Jeroboam basically creates all these new priestly offices for ungodly priests that he wants to institute idol worship with. Jeroboam created a national festival for pagan worship of his day. And in this time, the golden calves were the thing to bow down and celebrate. He chose the 15th day of the 8th month to hold this celebration. Uh, verse 33, he made it into basically a holiday. A month of his own choosing, and it says Jeroboam joined in the idol worship. What does it say? He offered sacrifices to the, on the altar he built at Bethel. What led to Jeroboam doing such a thing? Sinful, wicked thing. Early before, God, uh, he showed how corrupt he was. He was uh, Early before, he showed how corrupt he was. He was serving under Solomon, and Solomon saw that he was good at his work. So Solomon made him uh, one of the chiefs of his labor force. But through time, uh, God got angry at Solomon because Solomon had turned away from worshiping the Lord God and had started following his pagan wives in the worship of their idols. And so, while Jeroboam was serving under Solomon, who started turning from God too, God was angry at Solomon and was about to tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hand. The prophet earlier came to Jeroboam and told him, that God was soon going to tear the kingdom, the ten tribes, ten of the twelve tribes from Solomon and 
Joseph's hand and give them to Jeroboam, and he uh, give Jeroboam ten to rule over. So, basically, uh, God takes most of the kingdom away from Solomon. Solomon uh, ends up, uh, Solomon's son Rehoboam ends up with uh, southern Judah to rule over, whereas uh, Jeroboam gets ten tribes in the north, which was called northern Israel. And so, 1 Kings 11, 29, we see, through 40, we see this play out. And, uh, and uh, God just basically yanks that kingdom out. And basically, Solomon, at first, tries to kill Jeroboam. But, doesn't succeed, and Jeroboam flees for a time. And uh, hides in another land until this is fully ripe. And so when these events finally begun, began to take shape, Solomon's son Rehoboam was ruling, and Jeroboam slowly after reappears. Ten tribes in Israel defect to Jeroboam, and Rehoboam is about to start a war to claim, reclaim them, but a messenger of God warned him not to try. It says, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had come back, they summoned him to the assembly and made him king over all of Israel. No one followed the house of David except the tribes of Judah alone. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mo mobilized 180,000 choice warriors from the entire house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin to fight against the house of Israel to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, son of Solomon. But a revelation from God came to Shimei, and the man of God, say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, the whole house of Judah and Benjamin, and the rest of the people. This is what the Lord says. You are not to march up and fight against your brothers, the Israelites. Each of you must return home, for I have done this. So they listened to what the Lord said and went back and he, as he had told them. 1 Kings 12, 20 through 24. So... We see a different scene, we see in a different scene here later, Jeroboam, who is now king over the ten northern tribes, do something incredibly foolish and stupid. He says, uh, what happens was, Jeroboam built in Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. From there, he went out to and built Peniel. Jeroboam said to himself, the way things are going, the kingdom might return to the house of David if these people regularly go offer sacrifices to the Lord in his temple. In Jerusalem, the heart of these people may return to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will murder me and, and go back to the king of Judah. So the king sought advice, and then he made two gold calves. And he said to the people going to Jerusalem, It's too difficult for you, Israel, here here is your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. He set up, you know, set up one in Bethel and he put the other in Dan. This led to sin and the people walked in procession before one of the, one of the calves and all of the way to Dan. 1 Kings 12, 25-30 What was the true motivation of Jeroboam here? to cause him to sin this way, fear of losing control. Jeroboam wanted to keep it easy for the people to make sacrifices and not have to travel to do so, for one. Uh, he thought that if they went to Rehoboam's portion of the kingdom, they might eventually defect. So he was purely politically cowardly in this move on his part. He also knew the people were tempted by gold calves. These were the big idols of the day. To set up gold calves was a real temptation to the people. Uh, so he gave into the sinful culture. He gave into the sinful culture and he, uh, and, and he gave them what they delighted and craved the most to retain power and control, but it ruined him nonetheless. Often people or world leaders make the same foolish decision and mistake. Fearing people rather than God and willingness to make wrong compromises to maintain power or whatever, or to hold on to whatever they fear losing. Often when we as individuals do so, we still lose what we are afraid of losing and will destroy our souls while doing so. It is a lose-lose situation, friends. Doing the right thing is not always easy and popular, but and there is resistance for sure. But we do not have to worry about 
being having God be our enemy. God was offended and because of Jeremiah and became Jeroboam's personal enemy. In chapter 13, a prophet appears and denounces Jeroboam's sinful altar. And in anger, Jeroboam cries, seize him. But the arm, his arm and hand suddenly shrivel up and cannot be used. Jeroboam obviously freaks out and begs the prophet to pray for the restoration of his hand. Most of us would. The prophet does and his hand is restored. And Jeroboam basically says, come and eat with me and I will give you a gift. Basically a bribe. Uh, the man of God who denounced him refuses to go his way and refuses refuses to go with Jeroboam and leaves and goes his way. Jeroboam keeps on sinning and soon it is game over for him. Even after this, Jeroboam did not change his e evil ways, but once more appointed priests for the high places of all sorts of people. Anyone who wanted to become a priest, he consecrated for the high pr places this was the sin of the house of Jeroboam that led to his downfall and his destruction from the face of the earth. Nearing the fulfillment of all this, we see Jeroboam's son gets ill and he wants to know whether he will recover or not. So he and his, has his wife go in a disguise and try to trick the prophet, but the prophet, who is already going blind, knows it's her because God tells him. And when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet entering the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why, this dis why are you in this disguise? I have bad news for you. Go tell Jeroboam, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I raised you up from among the people. I appointed you as ruler over my people, Israel. I tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you, but you were not like my servant David, who kept my commands and followed me with all his heart, doing only what was right in my eyes. You behaved more wickedly than all those who were before you in order to provoke me. You have proceeded to make for yourselves gods and cast images, and you have flung me behind your back. Because of all this, I am about to bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam. I will eliminate all Jeroboam's males, both slave and free. In Israel, I will sweep away the house of Jeroboam as one sweeps away dung until it is gone. Anyone who belongs to Jeroboam that dies in the city, dogs will eat. And anyone who dies in the field, the birds of the sky will eat. The Lord has said it. As for you, get up and go to your house. When you beat enter the city the boy will die and all Israel will mourn for him and bury him he alone of Jeroboam's house will be put in the family tomb because out of the house of Jeroboam the Lord God of Israel has found something good only in him the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel that will eliminate the house of Rehoboam Jeroboam this is this is the day even today for the Lord will strike Israel and the people uh, will shake as a reed shakes in the water. He will uproot Israel from the good soil he gave their ancestors, and he will scatter them behind, beyond the Euphrates because they made their Asherah poles provoking the Lord. He will give up on Israel because of Jeroboam's sins he has committed and caused Israel to commit. And Jeroboam's wife got up and left and went to Tizra. And she, as she was crossing over the threshold of the house, the boy died. He was buried, and Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord he had spoken through his servant Ahijah the prophet. That's First Kings fourteen six through eighteen. Eventually, Basha, another guy that's not so good in the long run, uh, conspires against Jeroboam's sons and kills them, uh, with all Jeroboam's family too. First uh, Kings five. 29 through 30, as soon as he began to reign, he killed Jeroboam's whole family. He did not leave Jeroboam anyone who breathed, but destroyed them all, according to the word God had given through the servant Ahijah, the Shilonite. This happened because of the sins of Jeroboam had committed and caused Israel to commit, because he aroused the anger of God and the God of Israel. Jeroboam endangered the nation. We could see it was a downward spiral from there. He endangered his family. He endangered his soul. And sadly, when people act in wickedness, the destruction is enormous. We can see how it affected the nation to where God eventually destroyed and uprooted them from the land he had given them.
Hope you found this message encouraging and made you think God bless.